Welcome everyone! Today we are going to form the Holy Roman Empire in Hearts of Iron 4 as quickly as possible. Unlike my previous speedruns, this one's going to be an IGT as well as RT run, meaning I aim for the fastest real time, but also the fastest in game time in a single run. Let's see how that goes. Before we dive into the actual campaign, let me provide a brief explanation on what this run is about and what makes it so complicated. The requirements towards the Holy Roman Empire are twofold. We need to expand our territory and unlock the event chain towards Victoria III, the future Kaiserin of the HRE, through the focus chain. All in all, we need to do seven focuses starting from Oppose Hitler and ending with an alliance with the Shade. Each focus takes 70 days to finish. The fastest theoretical time to form the HRE is therefore 490 days or sometime in April 1937. On the other hand, we have the territorial requirements shown on screen right now. Doesn't look too bad, right? Well, here's the problem. In order to progress along our focus path, we need to start and win a civil war in Germany before the game even lets us continue to the next focus in line. But as soon as we start the civil war, we will flip to the non-aligned ideology. That's an issue. While the German focus tree offers plenty of war goals, none of them are unlocked via the focuses on our direct path towards the HRE. So we would need to justify plenty of war goals manually which takes time, especially as a non-aligned nation, because of fewer available modifiers. So why not do the conquest as Nazi Germany and start the civil war right after? After all, fascist ideology allows for much faster justifications, right? While it's tempting, it would massively add to the fastest theoretical time as well, since we could only begin to go through the focus path after the territorial requirements are met. Ideally, we want to start progressing along this path as soon as possible, with as little pauses in between and have all other requirements, including the territorial ones fulfilled when we finish the focus alliance with the shade. I could go into the many many hours of tested routes and failed attempts, but I think we'd rather get on with it and I will show you the results. As per usual, I'll try to explain everything that's happening on the fly, but there might be times where we need to pause for a moment to allow for some time to get into the details. As per the rules of speedrun.com for the formable nations category, this run is going to be played with Iron Man and historical AI enabled. I'm also not allowed to go beyond game speed 4. I've recorded the run in version 1.11 with all DLCs enabled, but only Waking the Tiger is a must have. Our setup for this run is fairly simple and that's by design. We have an event coming up early that involves RNG which, depending on the outcome, might force us to reset the run. The first thing we do after unpausing the game is to recruit 12 new infantry divisions. We also build some additional military factories, but that's just to get rid of the notifications. Afterwards we wait until we've accumulated 10 political power and improve relations with Yugoslavia. This is the first step towards what's called Yugostrat. It allows for a very, very early war, purely through the diplomatic system of the game. I've explained the mechanics behind it in detail in my recent Germany speedrun video. If you already know about Yugostrat, you might be surprised about its, well, unusual application. We have a short moment to prepare and use it to start researching new tech. If you expected paratrooper research, you're on the wrong track. This run's going to be using only regular combat mechanics, just a totally normal run. Just kidding, of course. I don't think any of what I'm about to show you was intended by the developers. First, let's sort our production. We delete most of it and only keep the lines for infantry equipment, support equipment and artillery. Navy doesn't matter, but convoy production does. We've improved relations with Hugo up to 11, which is enough for our purpose. Next, we delete the Axis faction and switch over to setting up our armies. Our tanks and motorized units are going to be stationed close to the demilitarized Rhineland. Another four divisions are going to man the Maginot line, while the rest of our forces move to the border with Czechoslovakia. All that's left is selecting generals and field marshals and gathering our air wings and fleets. Viewers of my channel might be wondering about the lack of naval invasions and you're right about expecting them. But not this time, my friends, not this time. Remember that I aim for a good real-time result too, and naval invasions are far too tedious for that. Things have calmed down a bit, but not for long. With another 50 political power accumulated, we can start a justification against the United States, which immediately spikes world tension by over 60%. The rise in world tension enables us to form a new faction with Yugoslavia. 
being in a faction with us will trigger an event that either leads to a civil war in Yugoslavia or a free and instant war goal for Germany against Yugo. The outcome is random, but with good odds, so restarting doesn't hurt much in case we don't get the war goal and the civil war event fires instead. For more details, watch the aforementioned Germany speedrun commentary, it's linked in the description. On the 2nd of February, we start the focus Oppose Hitler, which will trigger a civil war in Germany once it's finished. The starting date is very carefully chosen. The 60 days it takes for the focus to conclude is just enough time to get all preparations done. The Yugo event, if set up like this, will always trigger a couple of days from now on the 8th of February. Please excuse the hectic mouse movement. I had to balance my nervousness with a playstyle that's understandable to the viewer. Meaning I don't use many keyboard shortcuts overall. I hope it doesn't distract too much from the overall strategy. Moving on. The divisions close to Rhineland can now rush to the unguarded part of the Maginot line while we farm some army experience in Czechoslovakia. We cancel the justification against the United States, which would have taken half a year to finish, but immediately restarted afterwards. Since we're now at a war with a major nation, our justification time is heavily reduced to just 45 days. We don't want to push the Czechs too hard. We still need them. Instead, we fall back after we farmed at least 5 army experience. Yugoslavia is going to plummet into a civil war and we want it to be over quickly. The most reliable way to achieve this is to not put pressure on the front line with Czechoslovakia. By the way, do not let the new nation of Croatia into your faction. This can create issues in the mess that's about to unfold. Same goes for Hungary, who's also eager to join our faction, but actually won't join the war since they are surrounded by hostiles and can't fully mend their border. Now it's time to cancel our justification against the United States again. You see, we don't actually want to go to war with the United States. We just want to abuse the justification system to increase wall tension as much as possible, as quickly as possible. When we cancel an ongoing justification, the increase in wall tension is preserved proportionally to our justification progress. If we just let it finish as is, we get a measly increase of 62%. But if we play this game of cancelling and restarting instead, while already having short justification times because of our war with a major nation, we can spike wall tension to 100% in a very short amount of time. Meanwhile, we deployed our fresh recruits and created a fallback line from west to east. The placement of the fallback order revolves around two things. To encapsulate Berlin and to still have a border with Luxembourg. The five army experience from clashing with the Czechs is used to create a two with spam cavalry template. Shortly after, we assign all divisions to the new fallback order. Well, all but one. Our motorized division is going to stay on the tile next to Luxembourg. The Czechs are already aggressively pushing into Germany, while France usually takes their sweet time before crossing the border. If I wasn't scared to miss my queue, I would have managed the retreat manually and helped those two poor divisions to get out of the pointless engagement, but in this case I'm laser focused on cancelling the justification against the United States on the 24th of March. We've spiked world tension as much as possible, but now it's time to make use of it. Because of the high world tension, our ongoing war with a major nation and land lease to an enemy of ours, the justification time against Luxembourg is now as low as 10 days. That's also our countdown for the upcoming German civil war. So let's quickly mass recruit as many spam divisions as possible. This is a risky move and if you intend to follow this strategy, you might want to postpone it until the day the civil war actually breaks out. Why? Well, those divisions need 20 days until they can be actually deployed. Half of them will remain with Nazi Germany, while the other half stays with us when the civil war starts. But we don't want to fight them, of course. It wouldn't be difficult, but results in a significant delay. The only way to avoid that is to win the upcoming civil war in under 10 days, before the 20 days needed to deploy the divisions are over. And that's exactly what we're about to do, and not just to deny Nazi Germany our spam divisions. The focus oppose Hitler and our justification against Luxembourg both finish on the 3rd of April. It's the busiest day of the run, that's why we need to pause the game. The civil war will only break out once we press the button on the event notification. But we actually have a buffer of 14 days until it automatically triggers. We put the notification aside for now and instead declare war on in Luxembourg. Our motorized division is going to rush into the tile 
while adjacent units make sure it cannot be pinned. It's good practice to do the pinning a couple of days earlier, since the French sometimes attack into those tiles preventing our motorized unit from moving forward. Switzerland and Austria are next on our list. We justify on one of them, then the other, cancel the first and redo the justification. That way we end up with two war goals on the same date. Our motorized division moves into Luxembourg just an hour before midnight. It's still the 3rd of April. We pause the game again and delete most of our armor. Only a few divisions in the north will remain. It is time to kick off the German Civil War. Since we're now a non-aligned nation at war with the fascist baddies, everyone suddenly likes us very much. A bit too much for their own good. Because we can now get military access to all nations currently at war with Nazi Germany and we promptly make use of that. You can go totally bonkers with this strat just in case you haven't realized it yet. I'm going to release a video doing exactly that soon. I'm specifically not doing that for this run because otherwise forming the HRE becomes rather pointless since there is nobody left to clash with. But I digress. Before moving on, let's quickly take some decisions. Namely air safety regulations as well as both anti-fascist and anti-democratic raids. This will tank our stability, but it's necessary to increase our non-aligned ideology quickly. But wait, there's more. Like I said, it's a busy day. The game has automatically spawned crappy civil war divisions for both sides. But the game hasn't moved on a single tick since. And as a consequence, the impact on the map hasn't been factored in yet. If we just pin them in this state, they will be stuck in limbo. We can now finally unpause the game and enjoy the carnage we've created. Nazi Germany has barely any divisions, little territory and even fewer victory points. In fact, only the territory that we had left before the event fired is actually factored into the pool of victory points. That means that Munich, for example, simply doesn't matter, because it was not under German control when the civil war broke out. By the way, you have no idea how much that pleases me to say as a German born in northern Germany living in Berlin. Hey, don't judge, okay? I'm just keeping traditions alive here. Our objectives for the civil war are twofold. Most importantly, it has to be us who pushes Nazi Germany below the surrender threshold and not the Czechs. Otherwise both will just peace out, leaving the civil war unfinished. Secondly, we want to capitulate Nazi Germany in under 10 days. Like I said, not only to prevent them from deploying spam divisions, but also to not add on to the final time of the run. I mentioned previously that we cannot select the next focus in line until we've won the civil war. But there is a grace period for taking a focus which buffers up to 10 days. This means that if we manage to end the civil war before that, we can move on with the focus tree without delay. Meanwhile Berlin has already fallen. About time that we take some victory points of our own. Both Italy and Croatia will join Nazi Germany's faction, but they are reluctant to also join the war because Germany is already close to surrender. The seven day minimum time a war needs to last has passed for our conflict with Luxembourg, triggering the first peace conference of this campaign. Usually you are able to annex them, but sometimes France decides to puppet Luxembourg instead. Doesn't matter if that happens, unless you forgot about dealing with them later. The German civil war ended on the same day. Since the civil war overrules any regular war, there is no peace conference and no other nation can take a piece of our land, despite the circumstances. Our next move is to select the next focus, which is available now that the civil war is over and simply wait for our spam divisions to be ready. Meanwhile, we create a faction with Greece. When world tension reaches 100%, Greece can and will begin a justification against Albania. And because Albania is guaranteed by Italy, we are going to get a nice opportunity to go to war with Italy without creating a casus belli first. After deploying our spam divisions, we dispatch a couple of Mm, envoys to the nations that granted us military access. The majority will cover France and the United Kingdom. We use garrison orders to spread our envoys equally, so that every major city gets a visit from their new German friends. Any non-major nation only receives a single division, sorry envoy, that will tick at least one of the checkboxes needed to bring minor nations of affection to the table during the peace conference. Namely holding at least one tile of the territory, or having suffered casualties from their hands. When placing orders on the United Kingdom, leave out the Greater London area. We don't want to capitulate them immediately. 
After all that is said and done, we recruit a handful of additional infantry and as many regular cavalry divisions as possible. After deploying them at minimum training time, we merge the new infantry with what's left from the previous war and send them off to the UK. The cavalry units will cover the Swiss and Austrian border. Shortly after, the current focus has finished and we move on to the next one in line. On the 27th of June, our two war goals are ready. Before continuing, we begin justifying against Hungary and Belgium. Right afterwards, we declare on Switzerland and Austria, both of which have been guaranteed by the United Kingdom. As soon as we unpause, the UK will join the war against us, turning our once friendly envoys into an occupation force. The British island is barely defended. Our crappy spam divisions nevertheless don't stand a chance against regular divisions, at least not strength-wise. We instead exploit the AI by baiting them out of their position, something that I've also explained in detail in my Germany speedrun. A few regular divisions close to London are needed to encircle the British capital and destroy any newly spawned divisions. France is a little hesitant at first, but not for very long. And after they do, it just takes a day until we can use our divisions elsewhere. After France has fallen, we use the captured equipment to put even more infantry into recruitment. Britain is pretty much done at this point. We make sure to chase the remaining defenders away from the garrison positions, which I don't manage very well here. I'm not used to RT runs and it shows. If done properly, you want the Allies to capitulate before the war with Italy kicks off, but oh well. It takes a couple more days until the UK finally capitulates, triggering the biggest peace conference in this campaign. Two things are very important here. We're going to leave Czechoslovakia untouched, and puppet the UK. Everything else is going to be annexed. I also make parts of France into a puppet, but that's optional and not a requirement. Usually, Canada would become faction leader of the Allies after the peace conference in this situation. But because Czechoslovakia is also a member and considered stronger by the game, they get faction leadership instead. After the peace conference is over, we prepare our push into Italy with our existing and newly deployed divisions and add more infantry divisions to recruitment. As soon as we've manned the border, we join Greece in its war against Italy and Albania. Italy isn't able to put enough divisions on the border, allowing us to push into openings and create encirclements. There isn't much to worry about, but it's a good idea to try to speed through the narrow parts of Italy, since getting stuck there can create an actual delay to our strategy. We have to end this war before the focus return of the Kaiser has finished, and we just started the progress on it, meaning Italy needs to fall in under 60 days. By the way, you can only start this focus with at least 40% non-aligned ideology, which we just barely surpassed with the decisions that we took immediately after the civil war broke out. If I remember correctly, it was at 40.2%. Our divisions are superior in numbers and strength. All we have to do is counterbalance the AI's handling of our divisions. Towards the end, I don't even bother with frontline since they get really messy in small areas. Greece didn't accumulate much war score while fighting Albania's only division, allowing us to annex all of Italy and a bit of Albania as well. After the peace conference, we throw as many new divisions into the recruitment queue as possible before deleting all of our units on the map. If you try to recruit new divisions after deleting the armies, you'll end up with less divisions since the amount of divisions in recruitment is limited by the manpower in the field. We now wait for the focus return of the Kaiser to finish. It will trigger an event that has two outcomes. If the Netherlands think that they can't win a war against us, they'll submit the request and let the Kaiser return to Germany. But we don't want that to happen. That's why we deleted all of our divisions, since the calculation for the event is based on a nation's strength, a value determined by the amount of divisions that we control. The Netherlands are therefore going to refuse the return of the Kaiser. This gives us two options. Either we go to war with them, or look for other candidates elsewhere. And looking elsewhere is what we're going to do. I'm so sorry, Wilhelm. Without delay, we select the next focus in line, and take the now available decisions, reinstate Kaiser Wilhelm's right of succession, and modernize the succession laws. The combined cost of the two is 250 political power. Additionally, we begin justifying on the Netherlands. It's the last war goal that we need. Since we have a new war coming up against Hungary, which is already guaranteed by Czechoslovakia, 
We deploy our infantry divisions and give them orders. We also set the garrison laws to no garrison and recruit even more units with the equipment and manpower that was previously tied up in garrison duties. After another batch of fresh recruits is deployed around Czechoslovakia, we declare war in early December. The Czechs are understandably hesitant to do so, but will join Hungary eventually. On the 8th of January, we can pick the next focus called Accept British Naval Dominance. And yes, this focus path becomes a bit absurd if the UK is your puppet at this point. It gets even better once we finish the alliance with the Sheikh. You'll see. We could have long overrun Czechoslovakia by now, but that would naturally end the war for good. But we still have two more nations to take care of. Once we take down the current faction leader of the Allies, leadership would automatically be granted to one of the remaining members. Most likely Canada. Even if completely wiped out, there's a chance that democratic nations will simply create a new faction with the United States. Sure, we could work around all that, but why complicate things when all we have to do is wait it out? Once Hungary falls, we move one army to Belgium and start closing in on the Czechs. Since we won't be needing any more divisions, we can safely switch back to active garrison duties now. After our armies have arrived, we declare war on Belgium. We could just fulfill any of the annexed conditions and get them with little effort into the peace conference, but since we have more than enough divisions and close air support, we just push through. On the 9th of March, we can finally take the last focus that we need. An alliance with the Shade is usually meant to allow us into a British-led faction, but since they are actually a member of our faction, doing the focus is just a formality. In early May of 1937, our war goal on the Netherlands is ready. We declare right away and start attacking. There's no reason anymore to hold back against Czechoslovakia now, and on the 18th of May, they finally surrender. No trickery during the peace conference this time, we just annex everything. Immediately after the war ends, the Hindenburg event fires, and because we took the decision air safety regulations early, the airship survives. Otherwise, it's down to RNG with a big bias towards crashing. The focus alliance with the Shade is done on the 28th of May. The event with Britain fires right after, with wording in the message that doesn't make sense at all, since Britain is of course not faction leader. If you delete your faction beforehand, the placeholder for the faction name would just be empty, but it works just the same. Unfortunately, this is when my brain decided to opt out for a moment, actually costing me a couple of days in the process. As soon as the event fired, the last required decision towards Victoria III and therefore the Holy Roman Empire automatically unlocks. You can see it right there. Taking the decision costs another 150 political power. But in my excitement to finally have the recording in the bag, I miss my cue and lose 4 days. That's how long it takes me to realize that I forgot to click it. You probably don't care, but it bugs me a bit since the whole run was optimized to the day. But oh well, at least there's room to beat my time if anyone wants to give it a try. Two days later, the British accept our request to restore British titles. We choose to send a liaison ahead of time. Do not select the other option or everything we've worked for has been in vain. Because the Hindenburg is going to crash with the whole royal family on board. As a consequence, Princess Victoria Louise, our liaison, who we send ahead of the royal family, is now the last remaining heir to the throne and becomes the new ruler of the German Empire. At last we fulfill all requirements and can take the respective decision to form the Holy Roman Empire. And that's it. We've achieved our goal of forming the HRE in record time while complying with the speedrun.com rules for both in-game time and real time. We formed the Holy Roman Empire on the 10th of June 1937, just two months over the fastest theoretical time. The errors I made added 4 days to the total in-game time, and I know that it can be done way faster in real time. Aiming for 30 minutes might not be unreasonable. Let me know in the comments if going for both categories at the same time made for an interesting video or just a confusing mess. You can expect a couple more speedruns within the next weeks or so, because my wife and kids are currently on vacation, allowing me to finally do some recordings. I want to update my Roman Empire speedrun to 1.11 and attempt a real-time run to capitulate all major nations. Until then, thank you very much for watching, stay safe and have a great day.